Hello everyone. In this video, we want to talk about the cell theory and the main parts of the cell theory and who are the scientists they help to put this, these points of the cell theory. Now, let's start talking about this, um, th this theory. What are the uh, uh, parts of this theory? The cell theory lists the three basic characteristics of all cells and organisms. I'm talking about all organisms and cells, okay? The first one, all organisms are made up of one or more cell. Any type of cell, of organisms. You're talking about bacteria, you're talking about yeast, you're talking about a human, a plants. All of these organisms are made up of one or more cells. This is the first one of the cell theory. The second point of the cell theory. The cell is the basic unit of all organisms. So the basic or the smallest structural and functional unit of all organisms is what? Is the cell. Okay. So the last one or the last point. All cells come from existing cells. They, cannot, they are not creating from nothing. These cells, they are from what? Uh, existing cells for all organisms, okay? So, let's start talking about now uh, why the cell theory first is important. Um, the cell theory is fundamental to the study of organisms, medicine, heredity, evolution, and all other aspects of life science. Now, let's go and see who are the scientists they help to put the points of the cell theory. How did they work to put these points and put the, their conclusion at the end here? Listen carefully and write the name of each scientist and what did he do and they how they helped to put the parts of the cell theory. Listen now. People didn't always know that living things were made up of cells. It took scientists centuries to come up with what we now call cell theory. Cell theory states that all living things are made of cells. Click the timeline to learn how cell theory was developed. Let's start with the first one. How the, uh, as you know, Robert Hooke. You remember Robert Hooke? We said he was, he was the first one. He bought the, the term cell. He described the small boxes he saw under the microscope. Look. And listen carefully. In 1665, the English scientist Robert Hooke put thin slices of cork bark under a microscope and observed that the bark was made up of lots of tiny enclosures. He called them cells because they reminded him of the small rooms that monks lived in during the Middle Ages. Okay, so Robert Hooke was the scientist who first saw uh, and uh, named cells but what he was actually saying was cell wall you remember here it's what it's a plant cell okay these cells are dead since the cork cells uh, he was looking at were no longer alive uh, he didn't describe any of the structure or organelles that we know uh, we uh, now know exist within the cells he just explained what the outer membrane, which is the cell wall of these cells, because they were dead. Okay, let's continue. Antony van Leeuwenhoek was a Dutch scientist who built his own microscope. In 1673, he used it to observe that water drops were full of small creatures made up of single cells, which he called animalcules. He also observed that blood contained cells. Okay, he, uh, what did he do, uh, Van Leeuwenhoek? Uh, actually, uh, he was first person to describe uh, actual living cells when he looked at a drop of pond water under a micro microscope. Uh, so this is study told other scientists to put the points of this cell theory. Listen carefully. Two Germans, Theodore Schwann, a physiologist, and Matthias Schleiden, a botanist, noticed that both animal and plant tissue were made up of cells. 
in 1839, they propose that all living things are made of cells and the products of cells. Um, honestly, for these uh, two scientists, uh, Schleiden, uh, he said what uh, the plants, uh, the, the plants, they are made up of cells. But uh, Theodore, mainly, he said the animal, uh, they are also made up of cells. But mainly, who put the or uh, the um, the first two points of the cell theory? Actually, he was what uh, Theodore. Okay, so this point, uh, 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 sorry. Uh, so uh, uh, Theodore Schwann, uh, sorry. So. Theodore Schwann wrote the first two parts of the cell theory. And, and, and make sure this one is written in uh, your book. Uh, but in the video, they mentioned these two. They these two work together. One of them put the first idea. The second one put the second idea. Uh, but and the uh, and at the end, uh, Theodore he used uh, these two information to put the two points of the cell theory. Let's continue. In 1858, Rudolf Virchow, a German doctor, observed that cells divide, and he proposed that all cells come from similar cells. Up until then, people thought that cells just appeared spontaneously. Okay, so uh, Rudolf he put what uh, Virchow he put what the uh, third point of the cell theory: the cells they are not uh, generated spontaneously. They are generated from what existing cells. Let's focus on this point. Uh, actually, um, like uh, let's say, uh, people uh, believe that life could be generated spontaneously. Okay, that in the past, uh, which means from uh, non-living things. For example, people believe that the organisms that uh, spied food, for example, arose from the food itself okay uh, this idea was called what spontaneous generation it meant that life could assemble itself from non-living part okay um, what I hear so uh, Rodolf what he put the third point of the cell theory no these cells they are generated from existing cells now, these are the scientists who work to put uh, the main point of the cell theory. Uh, you have to know their name. Anthony here, Lvano uh, Levihock. Uh, it was, uh, oh, sorry, uh, Louis Vock. Uh, Anthony Van Levenhock uh, was the first to describe living cells. Uh, Schleiden uh, concluded that all plants are made up of cells. Uh, Theodore uh, determined that all animals' tissues are made up of cells. Uh, Rodolf uh, proposed that uh, cells could uh, form only from the division of other uh, cells. So, since we said uh, organisms made up of uh, one or more cells, what does that mean? Let's focus on this point more and uh, more. Actually, organisms, they are organisms like uh, human beings, for sure, birds, uh, uh, dogs, cats, all of these organisms, uh, bacteria, yeast, amoeba, okay? But if you look at bacteria, uh, if you look at uh, amoeba, these cells, they are made up of only one, these organisms are made up of only one cell. And this one cell can perform all life processes. These organisms made up of just one cell are called unicellular organisms. The single cell, which is one cell here, must carry out all of the organism's life functions. What about a human? What about animals, plants? These organisms made up of more than one cell are called what? Multicellular organisms. Think about your body. We have specialized cells. 
what does specialized cells and which means cells they are uh, they have a specific function to do for example red blood cells they carry oxygen um, uh, what about nerve cells they carry what Ele uh, electrical signals um, so as you see each cell it can what perform a function so the cells of multicellular organisms have a specialized uh, function it's not like unicellular organism one cell it can perform everything no we have a lot of cells okay each cell is responsible each kind of cells they are responsible to perform a function uh, i want you uh, to go to your book page eight and nine and uh, fill the blanks about these scientists what did they uh, 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 add or uh, put okay what their studies and uh, solve this question and send me your answer if you have any question send me you uh, you can send me your questions thank you for listening